Welcome to another video from Data to Decisions. In this video, we'll be building the volume bars or columns uh, at the bottom of this stock price history chart. In the previous four videos, we built this dynamic line chart pulling live market data from Microsoft Service for any stock symbol that you type in. And then we also built the minimum and the maximum points to be automatically highlighted. And we built two interactive slicers, one to control the period, whether it's a daily, weekly, or in monthly stock price intervals, as well as the history, whether you want five days of history or five years of history with a click of a button. So we've built all this. Now, in this video, we will be building the volume bar columns at the bottom, which will dynamically change, just like you just saw. So if I change it to year to date, you'll see that it still is there. And then the you know, the red and green or the orange and green colors, they represent the volumes when the price has increased from the prior period or decreased from the prior period. Based on that, we'll switch the colors. All of this dynamically in Microsoft Excel. Let's get started. So from where we left off in the previous video, we had the chart, we had these columns and everything. And again, if you haven't watched those, please watch those. Uh, we will provide them in the link in the description. Now, what we're going to do is to build the the green and the you know the red volume columns so i'm going to call it let's say green vol and essentially the formula that i want to write here will only populate the volume when the price is um greater than the previous period so the volume we already have but we have to write a formula against it uh, the the right the best way to do this with a dynamic array is I'm going to first name the column M into something which I can use in my formula. So in order to do so, keep in mind that all of these three columns are coming from a single formula we wrote in cell K3. So what I'm going to do now is go to formulas and then name manager, and you can see automatically. I mean already that. Um, these are the previous names that we have created. So we're going to create a new one. And this one, I, will, I want to call it as, let's see what happened. OK, there we go. A new one, I want to call this as um, R underscore VOL for volume, range of volume information. And for this, I'm going to use the simple formula index of cell K3. This is where my stock history function is. So in your work for, uh, worksheet, wherever you have written the formula for stock history, please use that reference. And then put a hash and then comma, comma, third column. Because we extracted the date, the price, and the volume. So volume is in the third column. So I put three. And I press OK. So now R underscore VOL is the range where all my volume information is. So now I can go ahead and start writing my first formula. And this time I'm going to write a simple formula to say if R underscore price. So R underscore price is nothing but the column L, which is where we have the price. So if price is greater than, I'm going to use the offset function. And in the offset function, I'm going to pass R price again, comma, minus one. So basically, I go back one, uh, one row above, zero columns. And then the height of this is essentially how many um, rows do we have in the R price? There we go. And then this should be good to go. Close the offset function. So if my price is greater than the price in the previous row, then I want to know the, because this is a green volume, I want to know the volume information. Otherwise, NA, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, we'll test it so, so it all makes sense. So let's look at the price here. On uh, This is going back 2019, so 110.39. The next period or the next day, it increased. So when there is an increase, you want the volume. And then let's go back here to this point. Price reduced from 117.65 to 117.52. So when there is a decrease in price, I don't want the volume information to be displayed. So it looks like it's working. So I'm going to use the same concept, copy the formula, and go to the next cell, paste it. And now this time, if the price is less than the previous price, 
then I want the volume. So I'm going to hit enter. I didn't change anything else except the greater than becomes less than. And now I can call this red wall. Again, that's just a, a header that I'm giving here. It doesn't mean anything right now. But you can see here that when the price is increased, so for example, when the price decreases, the volume will be displayed. Same thing here, from 120 to 117. So you get the volume. So essentially now the volumes are getting populated correctly. Before we add them to the chart, I want to give them names. Uh, because we want that our chart needs to be dynamic. How many of our data points are shrinking or increasing, our chart will still work. So what I'm going to do now is to go to the name manager again, and I will write a new name, and I'm going to call this as R underscore, let's say, green. And then for this one, I'm going to refer to this cell where we wrote the formula for the green volume. Uh, this is P3, cell P3 for me. I'm going to put a hash at the end. This is extremely important. Press OK. Go again, do the same thing, R underscore red. At this time, I will point to Q3 and then press hash. OK. So now we have given names to these two new ranges of values. Now we need to add them to the chart. I click on the chart, select data, add. And this time I can add uh, a name. So let's say I'm just going to use the verb the green wall uh, volume name. And for me to uh, you know, give a series values, I can click on any cell in my sheet, no problem. Make sure that if there is a one in front, remove it. Um, basically, the sheet name, exclamation mark, everything after the exclamation mark, remove it, and then just type in R underscore V, because that's the name we gave. As soon as I hit tab, you will see that it is pulling in the volume information. I can see the numbers come through, so it's just good. So press OK. For the x-axis or the horizontal axis, same thing, click anywhere inside the sheet, and then come and remove all the exclamation after, and then I will do, um, this is dates. So x-axis is coming from R underscore dates. We covered that in the previous video. Please watch it if you didn't. Um, and I'm going to add the red volume now. Uh, I can type it in, or I can just point it to the cell. doesn't matter. Uh, that's we are not going to display it to the user uh, in this uh, exercise. Now, for the values, though, click on anywhere, and then remove everything after the exclamation mark, and then do R underscore red, because this is the red volume columns. Wow, uh, you can see that the chart is changing. <laughs> so not the way we want it, but that's okay. Um, for the x-axis, again, I'll do the same as I did before. R underscore dates, and I will fix the chart shortly. But we have done all the connections, right? So now it's all about just going back, changing the chart type. And this is important because we now have a lot of different series in our data, the five series. So the closing price, I want it to be a line chart, no doubt about it. The minimum, I want it to be aligned with markers. The maximum is aligned with markers. But I'm going to move them to the secondary axis and keep my green and the red volume columns. So these are cluster column on my primary axis. So this is what I want. Just make, make note of this. Closing price, line chart type. Secondary axis, minimum and maximum line with markers, secondary axis. Green volume and the red volume are clustered columns, primary axis. Say, OK. Still doesn't look the way we want it, I know. Um, so let me you know, reduce the history. One year still doesn't look uh, the way we want it. So the one trick I do, because I don't want the columns to be so uh, tall, I want them to not take up this much space. So one technique I've done is essentially adding a dummy series, which makes these columns shorter. Um, so let's let's do year to date. Okay. First we'll we'll fix the color, and then we'll go and fix the height of the columns. So Control One. After you click on the chart, Control One. This allows you to go to the green volume columns. Go to Solid Fill. 
choose green, clear green, um, no borders, that's fine. Go to the red volume, solid fill, choose um, again red, then the line. Great, so that's done. The easy part is done. Now let's do the little bit more hard part. How do I make sure that these columns don't take up the entire chart and go down um, a little bit in height? So I'm going to create a dummy series, and this dummy series is nothing but r underscore volume times four. Okay. So again, the numbers is got, numbers are going to be much larger, right? So now I can go and say add this to the chart. But before I can add this to the chart, I need to go to the name manager. So to define the name, uh, I just leave it as dummy. Uh, uh, just point to the cell and then put a hash at the end. That's it. Go back to the chart, select, add, and uh, it's a dummy series. So you can name it uh, anything. And then I'm going to come back here and then um, remove everything after the exclamation mark and type in, I think I called it dummy or R dummy. Dummy. Okay. So uh, if I were consistent, I should name it as R underscore dummy, uh, but you get the concept. So I'm going to press OK and it still doesn't look right. So I'm going to right click, change chart type. And the dummy one, I want it as a clustered column. Okay. And then in the primary. So don't switch on the secondary. So let me show you again. Closing price, line, all these three will be the secondary axis. The green volume, red volume, and a dummy series, they're all in a primary axis. Okay, so now it looks a little bit better. Now, what I'm going to do is make sure that, um, now let's click on the chart again, press Control 1, and let's go to the dummy series. I don't want any fill, so remember that it's filling it up with the colors. I don't want it, so just no fill, no line. I just want that dummy data to be there so that Excel kind of thinks that the y-axis needs to be much larger. So the other, um, you know, the green and the red columns or the volume columns become shorter. Uh, and again, this right um, y-axis format axis, not sure why exactly um, that is doing it as a dollars because previously we had the price in there so that's probably why uh, we don't want that so maybe you can um, change that into uh, a number and then you don't need the decimals so make sure that you can go back to the display units and then change it to a larger number for example i could change to millions and that will make the y-axis a lot cleaner so this basically gives us the volume columns at the bottom with the green and the red alternating colors. And then we can still see the price history more clearly at the top. So instead of creating two separate charts, what we are trying to do is to have the line chart on the top and then the uh, volume columns in the same chart at the bottom. So this is the technique that I used so far. And you can download this as a template that I published a while ago with all the functionality, and I'll put a link to this in the video description. But basically what we have done is you type in any symbol. Let's just test it out. I'm gonna type in Apple, and I don't know the symbol. So I typed in something, and you will see a question mark if you don't know what the symbol is, and then you can um, use the Excel's help. So basically when you click on it, it'll say, okay, do you want Apple in, uh, in the NASDAQ or Apple in, whatever this uh, exchange is, I'm, I'm gonna choose this one uh, for now. And so now it will tell Excel to go and grab the data for that specific stock uh, symbol and pull it from the Microsoft service. And that brings the data into our columns KLM. From there, we can then um, create this chart of line. And then we added the minimum and the maximum to point the to add or display the maximum data point and the minimum data point and then we did this interactive slicer where we can change from daily trends to the weekly trends and then we can always change the start and end date so instead of going and changing the date manually we built this slicer which basically allows you to click a button 
and change the data that you're looking at, right? And then finally, we can always change back to a daily history or weekly and monthly, and then the columns at the bottom represent the volumes. And then you can, you don't have to use those columns anymore once you have developed it. So you can make your sheet much cleaner, organize it the way you want it, increase the size of the chart if you want it. But basically the functionality is built. All you have to do is type in a symbol and then use the slicers to interactively explore the stock price uh, history data. If you have any suggestions on how to make this better, please let me know. I look forward to learning um, from you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in the next one.